one second. out there in Behance land. This is Tamika Grooms. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Thursday 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time figure drawing session. Um, today we are back again to do studies for the human figure. So um, every week, uh, so probably since May, we've been doing uh, figure drawing um, and we do different things each week. And um, sometimes we do hands and feet, sometimes we do full bodies, sometimes we do costumes and heads and all different kinds of things. And um, we, I try to mix it up and keep you all on your toes. Um, there's a few different reasons why I do that. One reason is because I don't like to get bored doing the same thing over and over again. And the other reason is because if you go to a live figure drawing session, you don't know what type of model you're going to have when you go to that live session. You don't know if it's going to be a different, you know, certain body types, um, gender. You don't know what you're going to get. You just have to be open and ready to receive. So that is what I'm presenting here for you today. So today we're going to be doing head studies um, and we have two special portraits at the end. So I've been tasked with um, improving my portfolio. <laughs> and um, since I do portraits really well, if I say so myself, I enjoy doing <laughs> portraits. <laughs> That's um, right. Hey, I'm McClaven. I know what I do well, and I know what I don't. <laughs> so, um, but I, so I've been tasked to do the influential influential people um, in portraits, and to see what I can come up with. So today we're going to start um, with some sketches that are really loose. We're going to do five minute sketches today. Um, it's going to be head sketches and you, we, you know, we don't know for sure what's going to come up because I'm using line of action and, um, and so we're just going to go with it and I already have one of the timers going so I'm going to skip to the next one. Alright, so before I do that though, I have um, on with me today Dan Flores. And Dan, if you can, I know they, the people who have been coming, they already know you a little bit about you. But I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are, just in case they don't know who you are. All right. I'm a regular guy, just a regular dude, playing an artist, likes to have fun, enjoy myself. But uh, I made having fun and enjoying myself my art career. So for the past uh, over 20 years, I've been a... Uh, artists uh, getting paid to do tattoos, illustrations, uh, paintings, murals, art installations, and uh, most recently NFTs. And for the past 10 years, it's almost 10 years, that my wife and I have been uh, leading a nonprofit organization called Art is King, where we coach artists in the business of art. So if you're interested in uh, devoting your life to this art career, then uh, we suggest you uh, get your art biz education together so you can make that art career fruitful. Word up. Word. Word up. All right, today. So um, thank you, Dan, for being here. I appreciate it. I always appreciate your support. So um, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, today we're going to start with these head studies. Um, let's go ahead and pick up our pens, pencils, whatever you got in your hand, your stylus, and let's draw. All right, so we got our first one, and I have some conversation that we're going to have today because I feel like there's some artists out there that might need to hear it. Um, but before we get there, let's go ahead and um, make some marks on this white page because white pages suck. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little scary. They're they scary. are a little scary, Ooh. yeah. So you got to make a line here and there. Get that going. It's better just to get it out of the way, even if what you put down it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. All right, exactly. Because you cannot fix something that's not there. Mm -hmm. So until you put something on the page, there's uh, you, you, the, the, the beginning is still waiting to get started. Yes. Yes. So um, I want to say hello to the people out there in Behance land. Now, I like to say Behance land because that's what I like to say. So 
Um, but other people say be hands. Other people say be hands because they're fancy. <laughs> I say be hands land. <laughs> I've heard somebody say be hands. Those are sickos. <laughs> but I'm from the South, so I say be hands. Be hands. Be hands. Get that, get that ham. <laughs> and I, oh, I add my own little flavor to it, too. So it's be hands land to me. Um, but uh, out there, all y'all in be hands land, thank you so much. I see you, Odari. I see you, Bree. Hello, hello, uh, Golden Rose. Thank you all for being on the stream. Um, I am making my marks here. And I just want to go ahead and knock this out real fast. Now, we do have five minutes, um, so you don't have oh, okay. to speed draw. You know, um, usually we're doing okay. two minutes. Yeah, I already finished. I thought I had but ten seconds, so I knocked it out. Let's see where you are. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go look at my drawing. You're not finished. Keep drawing. Go ahead and cheat. Go ahead and cheat <laughs> look at my drawing. <laughs> so I'll be toggling between me and Dan. Um, Dan likes to always try to finish first. But, uh, yeah. I like to mess with uh, mm -hmm. Tamika. She's a good sport. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I like about the arts community. We can be weird together. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right, so let's, let's get into um, part of what I wanted to talk to you about today. So um, I actually have been around quite a few artists today, whether, I mean, not today, but this past week, whether it was online or in person. And I'm running into people who are definitely having different experiences, you know, being artists. And some of that's due to this panini that we found ourselves in the past two years. Some of it's because of where people are in their art career um, and the experiences that they have had you know there's lots mm -hmm. of different reasons um, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about the starving artist mentality because I did hear those exact words and you know one group I was in we were talking about eating ramen noodles um, on a regular basis because of the starving artist thing and you know I ate ramen noodles a lot when I was in college and first out of college but um, you know after that I tried to avoid them unless I was really at a ramen restaurant <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Not to say I don't eat them, but I'm just saying that's not my go-to. So, um, so no, go tell ahead. us a little bit about that context, though. What was the context of it? Saying, were they saying if you want to devote your life to art, you need to sacrifice everything and eat ramen noodles? No. Until, or, what was the context of it? Well, some of it was that um, I think they learned to enjoy ramen noodles <laughs> at uh -huh. a necessity. Um, and there's nothing wrong with ramen noodles. I mean, it's the, it's the ones that, the instant ones is where it, it's not the, it's the difference between the instant ones and the fancy ones yeah. in the fancy uh, restaurant. Well, so, yeah. it's the sodium for me. There you go, there you go. It's the, all the junk in it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh huh. But, um, but what they were saying is, you know, um, sometimes out of necessity, you got to do what you got to do until you get to where you're going. But the whole, the whole point is that, you know, whether or not you believe that you have to starve is, is my thing in order to justify your art life. And so, um, you know, I didn't push back too much because, you know, people's experience is what their experience is. You know, you can't really say a whole lot about that. But um, a lot of times I feel like people don't know what to do to fix it. And, uh, and just uh, before we hop into it, because I have strong feelings about all of that, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, that's why I don't do panels anymore. Like, I don't want to sit in a panel because uh, everyone's experience is going to be a little bit different that is going to... Uh, that's it, five minutes. Yeah, that was up. five minutes. <laughs> Dang. And I, See, I didn't get very much done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, that, so everybody's art experience is going to be slightly different, different enough that it's going to sound contradictory. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that there's many different routes and ways in which a person, uh, an artist, gets to where they want to get to. And, uh, and, it's, it, and it's not like a marathon that has a very direct route that we all have to follow. There's a turn here, a turn there, a hill there, and a hill there. It's, no, it's, just, it's really... Um, two people could go through the same experience and have different outlooks on how they got there. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that's that's kind of tough, and that's why I don't like sitting in panels anymore. Because somebody will say something like, "Yeah, that doesn't that uh, that that's a little too generalized." Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I got you. Cool, cool, cool. And you 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 know the the thing too is because I I myself have taken a different route because I'm coming from a different profession that has afforded me certain things, you know. Mm -hmm. Um including resources and knowledge of how business works. And so my experience is going to be different than someone else's. Um, and so I didn't want to, you know, that's why I, don't, I didn't say very much is because, I, you know, I can't speak to their experience. Right. And, uh, all right, so, uh, so let's, uh, let's hop into it. But first, uh, Golden Rose says my voice is a little too low. So that may be the... Uh. The um, Tamika is in charge today. I so know. Go ahead, Tamika, pump me up. Okay, let's see if I can figure <laughs> that out. <laughs> so wherever you're listening to me and hearing me, you need to bump that volume up. Mm. So the speakers, it's on. It's on. It's going to be either the the volume on the computer coming out of the computer, or if you have a dial on the speakers, then you need to bump that right there. Oh well. Hopefully, um, let's see. Let's I see what happens. I turned the total volume up, and okay. I'm hoping it will be okay. All right, we're gonna roll with it and see mm -hmm. what happens. So, all right, so there's a lot of schools of thought, a lot, especially in this time period that we're living in. It's very tough uh, existence that we're going through right now, and uh, yeah. so there's there's uh, um what the like the 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 people who say what said who said what they said at the at where you were uh, people like Gary V who said you're gonna have to starve and eat um, ramen noodles for 18 months while you push on this thing and it's it and so it's a very simple generalization to the reality of what we have to live through which is why I like to talk about real life situations and how that affects a person because the other school of thought is you gotta have take care of yourself and take care of your mental health, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's really easy to burn out and die out uh, and let go of the art life and say, nah, the the that's not for me. And the reality is not that it's not for you; is that you went about it the wrong way. It's like if I wanted to be a, a an athlete of some kind of football, if I wanted to jump into the football field, and they're like, yeah, then you can play football, I'm like cool. And then I just hop on into the Falcons field, then I get beat up a couple of times. Like, ooh, man, you guys are crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, but them guys have been playing football since they were little babies. They're running around in peewee football, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and so the it is through the actual experience that of that one person or the artist that you will then find the lesson in the way that works for them. Me, I am addicted to drawing. And, uh, and so I cannot go a day, and I have had a day or two where I'm not drawing or touching the, the pencil or nothing, but it's like, I, I just feel like I have to draw something, and it's not for anyone to see, it's not for me to get props, it's just because this is the thing that drives me, kind of like breathing, you know, and so, and it is when you feel it to that extent where now you'll find, you'll find a time to sneak away a drawing. It's like people who smoke, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, you know nothing wrong with smoking. I smoke cigars, and anybody who decides to smoke anything in this life is their business. But the re but when you look at smokers, cigarette smokers, and you're working alongside them, they are taking breaks yeah. to go smoke a cigarette. It's calling them, mm -hmm. and and that's how art and drawing is to me. It's constantly calling me. I was just having a conversation with Artist 53, one of the Scully artists. He was here in my house a second ago. And, uh, and we were talking and go, uh, sharing some uh, each other's experiences recently, just catching up. Okay. And he's like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go and, and draw now. I got st stuff to draw. And it's like, that is that, that energy that you feel when this art life got a hold of you. And so it's sometimes to some of us, it's to an extreme where we'll not, we will not eat, sleep, mm -hmm. or drink, because we got to draw this thing. We will spend rent money on art materials. Mm. We will spend <laughs> food money on art materials. And that is where the starving artist mentality comes into play. That's where this thing where you, um, 
if you really care about something, you have to dedicate all your waking hours into it, all your energy. And then if we want to make money with art, and, uh, and it's been part of the business uh, mindset for a long time, to uh, work, they say, work for somebody else. Uh, you want to you quit working for somebody else 40 hours a week so you can start your own business and work 80 hours a week. Right. <laughs> and it's like, are you crazy? Like, I thought we were... Working smarter, yeah. not harder. Mm -hmm. and uh, But it sometimes feels like it's a race to see who is damaging their lives the most. Mm. And, uh, and, so, and so you have to take each experience uh, in, uh, as by, by uh, looking at that experience itself and not generalizing because we're all not made the same. Yeah. And, 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 you know, but there's another part to that side too where it was like, why are you crying about drawing every day? When uh, in, in saying that you need a break, because the people who do landscaping, they don't uh, uh, take a week off and say, you know what, I just can't look at another blade of grass right now. It's like, what are you talking about? You can't just stop because uh, you feel like you're you need a mental break. When in reality, this is the way you get pay your bills. And so there, so it's but so it's. So it's not one extreme versus the other. What it is is that work-life balance that we have to find in each one of us. And we all have different situations. You have children. Mm -hmm. um, most, one of them is almost halfway grown. The other one is grown. My, I have children who are grown, and they have children. So I have grandbabies who are babies and st still need attention. And it's like, so your methods in time balance is going to be different than my methods in time balance. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that's going to be the same is that we have to find that healthy balance yeah. that gives us time to decompress, gives us time to find inspiration in the world around us, and then come back hard again. Mm -hmm. And then step back, and then come back, come hard, come back hard again. Right now there's a football game going to be coming on TV in another hour or two, and uh, Thursday night football, I don't know who's two, what two teams are going to be on, but you know what they do? They, they play a game for 60 minutes, but it's not 60, 60 continuous minutes. Mm -hmm. It is in spurts of 20 seconds, 30 seconds, to a minute, a ma not even a minute, where each play takes a certain amount of time to complete and, and, and try to move the ball 10 yards yeah. down the field. And, uh, and you have four tries. You, t you, you give it four good tries. If you can't get 10 yards and four good tries, then you have to give up the ball and take a break. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do when it comes to our art and our lives. We have to handle lives. We have to live the, uh, uh, the experience of life. We have to also take the time to um, consume inspiration, yeah. to build your creativity. So then you can say, okay, let me go hard again. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need a week. And that's why I talk to artists a lot and I say, how much time do you really have during the week? Can you, can you, uh, do you have three hours in one day or three hours every day? Do you have 10 hours that week or do you have 40 hours that week to work on this art thing? Because once you decide you know that's the time you have, then you go ahead and start chunking it out in your calendar. And, and then you tell your family, listen, y'all, y'all going to eat pizza because I'm not cooking today. <laughs> right. All right. So this is, and it, it ain't no delivery. It's going to be frozen. Here's a big old frozen thing. Y'all put it in the oven. Leave me alone for the next three hours because mm -hmm. I'm about to go hard on this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, and that's real life. You have to look at it as real life because you can't go hard every day yeah. and stay up every night and, and then get up early every day. Because you have to have this, which you, you know, you feel it like you do, but then it's going to burn you out. And after a while, like, man, I can't look at another pencil. I don't ever want to feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, oh, and you ended just at the right time. This, that's the next um, picture. Um, I want to add to that. I think my daughters are such good cooks now because as they got older, they were, you know, learning how to do more and more stuff for themselves. And I don't feel bad about that. You know, part of raising kids is that you want them to flourish and be able to be self self sustainable. Um, um, but part of that was born out of the need for me to have some time to be creative too. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, my mother taught my brother and I how to cook, how to sew, 
how to clean, how to do our own laundry. And what she said was, uh, number one, I'm not doing it. And number two, she said, uh, y'all need to know how to take care of your own self and not depend on a woman. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so so my brother and I said, we, we had no other choice but it's like, you want to eat? Cook. Mm-hmm. I just taught you how to cook. You mm-hmm. figure it out now. It's your turn. Mm-hmm. And she worked. My mother worked hard all her life. So she was very busy. And uh, and, so it's like, and so it seemed natural to us. So whether you need time for yourself and focus and do your thing, or you want to raise uh, um, people, because we're raising adults. Mm-hmm. They're children, but they we want them to become adults. So that's what we're doing. We're raising adults. So whichever way you want to look at it, it works fine. But the fact is that, yes, we, we want to empower those and other artists. That's the same thing I feel about uh, everything I say. We want to empower artists so that they can take everything we say and then find a way to make it work for them in their own individual um, experience. Mm-hmm. But that's good. That's good. That's right. So there you go. So they don't have to eat pizza. They can eat real food, like you said. <laughs> right, okay. right. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. don't have to eat Raymond. Right. <laughs> uh, so, San Francisco treat. Right. Well, I, I, know to make, I know how to make really good ramen noodles anyway. Um, the way I make them, when I do, is... I put chicken or shrimp or you know vegetables it's got this whole other flavor going on and half the time I might use a little bit of the packet but I'll add hoisin sauce and you know um, all these srirachas and you know all this other stuff to it yeah 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 you uh-huh. know a boiled egg celery it's got stuff in it so it's, dress it up yeah yeah so it's not Let's just see. Yeah. <laughs> but now, now it's not, you're not eating ramen noodles because that's all you have, and it took fifty cents. Yeah, you know, pack it with hot water. Mm-hmm. You're eating ramen noodles because listen, I got the flavor for this, and I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up. Mm-hmm. I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah. Well, there's uh, so here's another part of that, is that um, a long time ago I quit uh, my tattoo shop. Me and Lord Yada, we shut down the tattoo shop. I was burnt out. I was tired. I was tired of doing art for people who didn't appreciate it, uh, asking for art that uh, did not move me, I was not inspired, and so uh, we shut it down, well like, that's it, that's enough of that, we, we had eight years of a tattoo studio and we shut it down, and, uh, and so I lived off my savings for a while, after a while I didn't have any savings, so after a while I was eating um, Chef Boyardee cans, mm-hmm. you know, because they were cheap, you get like four of them for a dollar like let's go with that and so uh and and so that was the choice because i wanted to budget Mm -hmm. the money i had Mm -hmm. not and and so i i had to go into survival mode i didn't have a business i wasn't having the kind of clients that i that would sustain uh a super um fruitful lifestyle so i had to scale back i had to scale back on on um Cable, mm-hmm. internet, um, activities, curricular activities, a whole lot of things. But we do all these things when we have a goal in mind and say, mm-hmm. okay, this is the crunch time. So it's not like you're going to live this way forever because I ain't living that way now. Yeah. And uh, and so, it, but we set aside the things that are going to distract us that are going to be extra expenditures that we don't need at this moment Mm -hmm. and say, you know what, I can live with this. And my mother raised us on on vitamins. She always gave us vitamins. (laughs) We had the same uh, mother. (laughs) Yeah, mm -hmm. my mother sold Shackley and a bunch of other vitamins, uh, something sunshine. Uh I remember, I remember. And uh, and I tell her, I don't want to take medicine. She says, it's vitamins. And I say, okay, so now my wife gives me vitamins. I'm like, fine, I'm used to it. Um... But uh, and so at least so you're gonna get your nutrition. That's not you know there's no doubt about that. But um, we have to. Um, the, so there are some things that you can scale back because there's a purpose. There's a reason for it. Yeah. And uh, and so art can be a reason, but then you have to have a goal. What is the goal here? Mm-hmm. Because we're not gonna go on for two three decades of our life. Right? We may go a year or two, but we're not going a whole decade of our lives struggling. Mm-hmm. We can't do that. Mm-hmm. Now, you can, and that's where the starving artist mentality gets a little mixed in. 
because we feel that we are not true to the art unless we're struggling. I don't know who said that <laughs> because I'm going to tell you this. Art material companies are not going to struggle. They are not making canvases for $10. Canvases that are 6 feet by 6 feet for $10. They're not going to do that. They said that's a thousand bucks canvas. Mm -hmm. They are going to have, they're going to charge people, artists, the price that they need to charge to produce those art materials. And, uh, and an artist is going to pay it. The art school is not going to take a break and say, oh, we love, we, we, we're so down with the art life that, you know, this is art creativity is important. So, yeah, got, you guys can come to school for free. They don't do that. The only people who do that are artists and say, yes, I'm glad you like my artwork. Oh, my God, I'm, uh, I'm, so, I'm so lucky to have someone who appreciates what I do here. You can take this. Take it. It's free. What are you talking about? That canvas costs you $100. To paint another hundred dollars, you spend twenty hours painting it. That's a minimum. That minimum wage with materials, at least four or five hundred dollars worth of work put together. But you're giving it away because somebody has appreciated you and said something nice to you. And so somewhere in history, at some point, I'm pretty sure Michelangelo and them experienced it too. Told them, "Oh no, nah, man, you got to do this for the art." Do this because you, you're a real artist. They're like, yeah, but I still I still need to eat. I still need to have sustenance. I still mm -hmm. need to get something uh, in exchange for all the investment that I put into this. And so somewhere along the line, it became sexy to be a starving artist. And, you know, Hollywood is a big old uh, machine that also will, will show that. And uh, in their films and movies and whatever, it's like the artist is always dirty looking. It's always like some bohemian mm. uh, looking person, hippie, hipster, whatever you want to call it now. And, and, and it changes, the term changes, but the same lifestyle, the, the lifestyle is the same. They're broke, they don't have money. Uh, they're always looking for uh, somebody to give them uh, some art materials. They're always um, saving um so they can buy some canvas or whatever. Mm -hmm. They need a benefactor of some kind. Golden Rose says, don't blame that on Michelangelo. He got commissioned. <laughs> <laughs> but I will bet you that the first few years, Michelangelo, before he got commissioned, they were trying to take him for whatever he had. He's like, oh, you draw real good. Here, draw me. Draw a picture <laughs> of me. All right, it'll cost. No, 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 you're going to draw it because you already got the paintbrush in your hand. Uh -huh. Just go ahead and rub it on that canvas. <laughs> And I'll give you exposure. <laughs> right. I'm going to tell all my friends. You're going to tell all your broke friends. That's what you're going to do. They're broke just like you. So, you know, it, it, so it, this has been generalized and brought down to a simple level that nowadays I don't like to hear people say, oh, yeah, you have to uh, give it all you got and, and eat ramen noodles. Yeah, you can. That's a generalization. That's one aspect of it. But. The reality is, listen, there's a big plan and step-by-step -step series of things that you should do to get your art career to the point where you need it to go. Mm -hmm. and, as, and, and there's a point in where you're going to have to bring down your bills so low mm -hmm. that you're able to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. And, and so... When you do that, you have a goal, you have a date. When you say, you know what, today is the last ramen noodle day. Tomorrow we get pizza. <laughs> and the next day we get steaks and potatoes and whatever, right? Because we've, we've reached a milestone. Mm -hmm. And so you have to set milestones. You have to set um, goals that will put you closer to, to your vision. That says, okay, cool, we made that. We made it. We made it. We, we got expendable income now. We kind of can afford that vacation now. Uh, you know, people, we've done that. We've done that. I, I say people, but my wife and I, we've done that. We've saved money. We say, okay, we're not eating out for the next two months. Because all that money we're saving, we are going to spend it mm -hmm. when we go to L.A. We're going to go spend it when we're in uh, Florida. 
when we go to Texas. Well, wherever we're traveling later, that's where we're going to spend all this money that we wish we had stopped at Eats in Midtown. Mm -hmm. I wish I had stopped at Golden Birch to get me a steak and a... And a Ale mm -hmm. that you know that by the time I pay the bills a hundred dollars. What's the other joint I really like that where they serve you meat all day? Fogo de chow. Mm. It's just a hundred dollars just to walk in through the door for yep. two people. Yeah. Add the drinks and the desserts because I'm gonna drink eat some dessert and uh, it's a hundred fifty bucks. Before you know it, you know you live in large. And so it's like wait a minute, let me save that money and I'm a, and so when we go on vacation, I have extra cash. Mm -hmm. So we're used to that. Mm -hmm. And we have to look at our art career the same way. I'm working towards a goal here. I'm working on getting uh, my art materials. I have an art installation that I'm working on uh, or, or um, a, uh, a proposal or just a vision that I have for myself. Mm -hmm. I want to work on this thing. And then, so you set aside and say, okay, cool. Well, we, we, can't, we can't order out right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to buy all my coffee in a bag and then Brew boil some home. water at home yeah <laughs> right. yeah we're gonna do that you know and then as time goes on uh you say okay cuckoo's blurge time you know and then you go back to that and so but you always do it for milestones so the styron artist mentality has been has been become this thing that if you're not living it then you're not real mm -hmm. and uh and and that's kind of um that's kind of brought on by society, those that want to take advantage of artists, and then uh, and then those who maybe they enjoy that. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't want to. I haven't starved in a long time, and I do not intend to. Yeah, yeah. I was um, when you were talking. Well, let me say uh, see what they're saying in the Discord here. Oh, oh, Daria is saying that we're in church today. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think we are. <laughs> oh, you know, we got to hear it sometimes. We got to be reminded of, you know, what, where we are as artists and what we actually need to be, you know, making our goals towards too. Um, Odar is saying next time he's in Georgia, he's going to come and eat, eat ramen noodles with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because you hook it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I do make some good ramen noodles. <laughs> All right. Um. And what I was going to say was, oh, let me switch to you so they can see what you got going on. So we're, we're drawing John Lewis now. Um, um, I'm going to come back to what we're doing, but I want to say this real quick. Um, before I got to this year, I, I had a goal in mind, and I saved for probably three years to be able to get me to the point where I was confident enough to make a change. So, um, you know, there were some skills that I had to get. There were some, some connections I needed to make um, within the art community that I, I work in. But there was also a level of confidence to know that I could do this for at least for a while until I figured out what I was doing, um, freelancing and doing commission work. And it's not to say that I'm not going to, you know, make other changes, but I have a goal in mind for this for right now. Um, that I've prepared for years ago and so so when people ask me like what am I doing now and I tell them and then I also tell them that but I prepared to do it too so it wasn't like oh I just woke up and said I want this change I've yeah. been preparing for a long time right right so you're saying you quit your job mm -hmm. you quit your job high paying job you know Tamika everybody you know Tamika is an engineer mm -hmm. Went to school. How many years? How many degrees you got? I only got one degree. One degree. That was all, <laughs> all you needed to get rich. That's, whatever. And, uh, <laughs> I ain't rich. I ain't rich yet. I wish I was. But, right. <laughs> but you went to school. You got a degree. You followed your career for a long time and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know, so you invested, invested into it. You're invested into it. Yeah. And uh, and so, and then you found a way to build. On that investment, that art, that that uh, that career as an engineer, mm -hmm. to then find a way to how can you, uh, and uh, to, uh, build the the backup so that you can spend time is as an artist mm -hmm. following your art career, you know, and and that is the right plan to have. And I always tell this to artists all the time, 
they, when they say they want to do art full time, it's like, great, keep your job, let's build your art career. Yeah. Don't quit the job and say, okay, where's where where the people who buy art at? They're like, no, 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 you can't come out the gate like that. You need to go ahead and firstly get get them to get them to know you a little bit. Mm-hmm. Was I what, what was I doing that? I was talking about this. Oh yes, yes. When we were talking about the uh, NFTs, at some point I said the story is that you know we we have to build um, yeah community. We have to build relationships, and we have to build our own backup. Mm-hmm. And so that when we come out out to the art community, we start, and, and then they know that we're full time artists. Um, they accept us, and then and there's a relationship to be had. What you don't want is to quit your job and then start harassing people and be like, hey, who wants a mark? Mm-hmm. Because then you sound like that like that bum at the gas station talking about, I need a dollar. Mm-hmm. And you're just trying to, you just stopped to get gas and now you got somebody harassing you like, man, get away from me. What are you talking about? And so, and so that's how what people, not just artists, but anyone, sounds, looks like when they start talking about a business proposition, but I never talked to you before. I don't know you. Leave me alone. Mm-hmm. And and so what we need to do is build those relationships, build that backup, so that um, by the time you hop on, you have your own resources to to work on uh, that art career, or already have done enough that when you are talking to people, they know who you are, mm-hmm. and they and they have there's proof of your work. So Dan, I want to add to that because. I did it that way too. I did it the wrong way. <laughs> so I had to figure out that I was not ready to quit my job yet. Like like I literally quit three, four, I don't know, years ago. And I went back to the job because I didn't do things in the right way. Right. So I had I still had stuff to learn. And, and you know, the, you, you go through those things sometimes. Yeah. And that's why you have people, mentors in your art community kind of, you know, mm-hmm. redirect you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you make a mistake, yep. so but yeah, and you know that's normal mm-hmm. in any situation. As a baby, the first step the baby takes takes that baby. I'm sure in their mind, I don't remember being a baby, but I'm sure a baby thinks, "Oh snap, I got this," mm-hmm. and then they fall on they behind, mm-hmm. and then like, "Oh, I guess I need a little bit of extra strength now." Yeah. You know, and so and that's that, so that's in any situation. Nobody starts off running, and so the first time out the gate, it it, it, it may cost you something, but there'll be lessons to be learned. And uh, and like I said, I shut down my tattoo shop. I was done with it, and uh, and and it was a learning experience where I, after being in the business for. Uh, to me, 95 to 05, that's 10 years, um, I still felt like I failed. Mm-hmm. I, I was burnt out and I was tired. I didn't want any anything to do with anything anymore. And so and so I still had to, I, I still wasn't ready. And uh, and, and so it's not that I, I didn't know any better. It's that we, there are some things that when we're in the middle of it, we don't see. Yeah. And, and no one can tell you. That to no one can tell you enough for you to see. Mm-hmm. No matter what someone says, that you'll still be like, "Nah, that ain't gonna happen to me." I, I've had relationships in the past. I'm not sad about them anymore because I'm happily married. And I don't care. Mm-hmm. But at some point, I did. I was sad. I was like, "Oh my god," you know. And uh, and it's like, uh, uh, but when you're young and grown, people tell you, "Yeah, that's that's a dumb move." You're like, "No, <laughs> he loves me." And uh, and so we, that's not gonna happen to us. Like you, you nineteen. What the? You, you don't know, know nothing. About life? About nothing. You know nothing. <laughs> All them TikTok videos they ain't gonna teach you the reality of life. And uh, but you know that's that's how passion leads humanity, which is a good and a bad thing. But that's what art is. Art is a passion. Mm-hmm. Art is something that comes from the heart. It comes from within you. It comes from your soul. And so sometimes it's just you're just gonna have to live through it to understand it, to realize it, and be like, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, it's not too late because uh, I can still go back to the job. It's not too late because you know I can still recover from this thing or that thing. Mm-hmm. 
And so, in any case, it's a, it's a, it's a normal part of life, and it happens in all kinds of different situations. However, the most important part is that you can be able to sit back and think about it and start using your brain along with your passion. Mm-hmm. And that's what artists need to do. They need to use their brain along with their passion. Yes, indeed. Dang. Dang. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going around in circles. Y'all let me know if I said something already or if I need to move on. Cause, um, no, you're I, good. I, I can... <laughs> you're good. You're preaching that, that art life gospel, and we need to hear it. So I just no 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 go you go. I was, I was gonna say I just want artists to to number one focus on having fun. Mm-hmm. Art is a fun thing. Art is something that you enjoy, and it brought you joy the first time you tried it. It brought you some kind of feeling and emotion, and so that's why we get addicted to art. Mm-hmm. There's that passion. As time goes on, some of us, and it's not for everybody. Some of us decide that, you know what, I want this to be my job. Mm-hmm. And I know plenty of artists who have regular jobs. They've been, they've been, they've been in their career, art, uh, cre- um, business careers and their uh, working careers for 20, 30 years. And they're okay with that. And they paint and they travel the world and they, they paint on walls and they paint on canvas. And they're still happy and they're happy with themselves and that's cool. And then there's artists like me who's like, oh, you know what, I don't want to do nothing else. I've, I've been a landscaper, I've been a cook, I've been in the Marine Corps, I've been, uh, I worked at Taco Bell, I worked at Mexican restaurants, I worked at a steel company. I used to have Popeye arms, like literally. <laughs> my arms, uh, my forearms had muscles. And because uh, and, I worked at a steel company for six months, I was there, and I was young in those days. I could take anything. And, uh, and it's like, I don't want to do any, I don't want, I like being dirty, I don't like being sweaty, I don't want to do anything and for, for money. Mm-hmm. I want to draw, mm-hmm. to draw, draw, draw. So, there are some of us then, who then decide, okay, what can I do out here in the art world that will pay me what I want to draw the things that I like to draw? And when you start asking those questions, the answer is not the answer is multi-layered. Mm-hmm. You have to go from the art world to digital versus traditional versus animation and comics versus 2D illustration, 3D renderings to uh, what how, how, narrow it down yeah. to the type of career you want to have. And once you have you uh, you know a, a bit of that answer, the pathway is is uh, easy to recognize. And here's how you recognize that. Dan, that's I looking just, good, by the way. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, thank <laughs> you. I, uh, uh, the pathway is, and I have a four-level thing, uh, but, but I'm not even going to get into that yet. Uh, the pathway is, number one, what is that art that you want to get paid to do? And who is out there paying that? Mm-hmm. At the level that will sustain your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with anybody getting paid $10 a drawing. That's cool. In some parts of the world, $10 is a lot of money. <clears throat> Here in, this, in Atlanta, Georgia, is not. It gets you a burger and some fries. Mm-hmm. And I need a lot of $10 to pay a bill. So, but, so for me, the, the answer is how much I want to get paid. Do I want to get paid tens of dollars? hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars do I want to do 100 drawings for ten dollars to get to make a thousand dollars a month or do I want to make two drawings at five hundred dollars so I can get that thousand dollars a month budget or do I need to just make do I want to get two one thousand dollar drawings so then I I make two thousand dollars a month what's the level that I, of money that I need. And once I decide on that, then I start looking around the market and say, who's paying for that? Who's paying for that? And, and, and is that who you want to work with? And once you recognize that, let's say Nike. Let's pretend. We're talking big time. Mm-hmm. We're, not, we're, not, we're not playing around here. <laughs> I want to get paid thousands of dollars per one gig. Illustrations. I want Adobe to 
give me tons of cash. Cool. Now, now let me look at Adobe and Nike. Who are they working with? Who are the artists that they're working with? And now I have my pack set. It's done. I can tell because now that I look at the list of artists, now I can look at their portfolios. I can look at their websites. I can look at their social media. And I'm like, oh my God, I need my skills to be to that list and my technique. And what am I about? Who am, who am I? What do I exist? What is this art about? Why do I create? What does it stand for? And that's, that's, the, that's the outline to the art life career. Mm -hmm. A thriving artist art life. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say after that. <laughs> I think you just dropped the mic. I really do. <laughs> um, no, all of that was good. All of it. Um, I'm going to switch to this next picture and then we'll talk a little bit more. Um, hold on one second because I can't do two things at one time. Hold on. Yep. <laughs> all right. And then, then I'll tell you what we're doing here. But I, I want to, um, you know, keep going down that vein um you know you don't have to i'm just piggybacking off of what you say you don't have to do this full time that's not a necessary but to me no. you do have to be happy and so if that means that you carve out whatever amount of time you need in your life to to be happy that's essential more than making a living off of it more than anything else, it's essential for you to find your happiness. And if, if, if art is a part of that, then that's what you need to do. So. Right, right. And see, that's why that, that, that uh, doing art for fun, for the enjoyment, is super important. You can't leave that. I did that happen to me. I, I, I was not happy anymore. I was not happy drawing tattoos for people because they were asking me for things that I didn't feel like drawing. Mm -hmm. But that's the business. I was already in the business. I had a tattoo shop. I had, a, I had to pay rent. So you can't turn away customers. You can't tell them, no, I don't want to draw a dragon today. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like drawing dragons, man. What's wrong with you? I'm done. I'm tired of doing crosses. Well, they came in here ready to pay for that. And that's the business. So I need to go ahead and sit down and say, well, today we're drawing dragons and crosses. Mm -hmm. And so, so I got burnt out because I was unhappy. I was unhappy. I was not challenged anymore. I did not feel like, like this... Uh, my skills were valuable to anyone. I was a machine. I was a Xerox machine. You were hired hands. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so I quit. I was like, you know what? I'm out of here. Forget this. Let's shut it down. We're done with this. Because I, 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 I'm not, I'm a, art, the joy that brought me into art, I don't feel it anymore. And so I then, it was then that I decided that, you know what? I'm only going to do the art that I want to do. I'm only going to take the clients that I want to take, and uh, and if they want the art that I want them that I that I, uh, I I will do the art that I feel like doing and tackling on, and it is and it is then that I was then that I had to then um it was at that time that I had to then put a plan together on how I'm going to ex uh, accept the projects. How I'm going to follow up with clients. How I'm going to make sure that my portfolio fits the things that I want to do. So that people don't ask me for stuff that I don't do. Mm -hmm. There's great Japanese uh, art artists out there. Great. I'm not, I, I'm not good at that. There's great uh, full color tattoo artists out there. I don't do that. That's not my thing. I'm black and gray. I love pencils and I love tattooing in black and gray. Well, then that means that's all my portfolio is going to have. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it, you have to, it was then that I had to make a decision on what I was willing to spend time on. And my happiness had to come first. Mm -hmm. My happiness had to come first. And you you don't want to get there because I, thankfully I had um, some some backup money. So I could sit back and say, you know what, let me figure this out. Let me take my time. But a lot of times you don't. You get caught up and that's how we end up in a job for 20, 30 years mm -hmm. or for a long time. Because you get caught up in uh, the, the, the job and, and paying for your lifestyle that after a while you can't just quit the job because your lifestyle is attached to it. Yep. Yep. Been there, done that. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
and that's when we have to cut back and start all over and say, dang, now, now I'm going with Raymond. Raymond noodles. <laughs> and Anne's the San Francisco treat. What's that? Other, what's that? Rice of Roni. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know how to hook that up too. <laughs> Man, if you know how to work your way around the kitchen and you you know about spices and look, my right. mom my mom used to do a uh, hamburger helper and she did the hamburger helper the normal way. I don't know if she added a little extra cheese, but she do. Um, and I was just talking to my brothers about this the other day. Uh, she would do the little sliced white bread. She put mm. some butter on it, cut it in little triangles on the side. It looked real cute and it tasted good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was know. definitely was not garlic bread. <laughs> uh-huh, right, so, right. <laughs> I didn't know what garlic bread was when I was little. <laughs> so. Right, right. It was, uh, it was, uh, um, what's that? Wonder bread. It was wonder bread with it, butter. That's exactly. What that was. <laughs> it was wonder bread. <laughs> it was uh-huh. wonder bread. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, that's just, you know, that's, that's, that's why it's important to have fun, enjoy yourself, and map out your art career. Map it out. You can't start a marathon without understanding and knowing the map, Mm -hmm. number one. Number two, you can't start a marathon one day and if you you haven't ran those 10 miles before, or at least ran 10 miles before. Ran 10 miles for for the past six months. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. I mean, I guess that you could do it, but uh, but you're going to hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. How do you know your body can take that? And so, and so that's where the art life comes into play. It's like we have to do so much to get to a point where now you feel like, yes, I could do this or I have the tools or now I figured out I don't have the tools because I tried it a few times and now I know what, what, I, what to look for the next time. Yeah. And so that's it. It's, uh, but, so we have to enjoy ourselves. We have to pick the art that we like to do. Because if you happen to do one landscape one day and you post that, and, and then now you got the landscape people calling you like, "Hey, that's great! I got, I got, I got twenty landscapes I need you to do," and you're like, "No, I like drawing cars. I just drew the landscape one time, and well, that's that's the one, that's the thing that hit." Yeah. And now you gotta draw landscapes because like, well, there's the money, you know. But now you're sad inside. Mm-hmm. No, we can't live that life. No, 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 no. Yeah, we don't want to be sad artists. No, we don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that that's what the, that's. If you want to be a sad something, be a sad clown. <laughs> okay. They cry in the inside, <laughs> right? They they're happy in the outside and they crying in the inside, man. Oh, no, man. that's not a good life. Mm-mm. I don't know. I mean, I mean, unless you kind of that kind of person. Some people do like drama, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge. I'm not gonna judge. So, um, so yeah, thank you for all of that, cause um, you know, I need the reminder sometimes. Um, because I don't have it all figured out. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are also, um, you know, in the same, on the same path that I am trying to make their, their way. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it is a journey, so. It is a journey. Mm-hmm. And it's going to take time. But you got to stick, stick with your community. Find your community. Find those who have the same mindset as you. Mm-hmm. For a long time, my whole life, people would tell me, you know, why, why you draw? What is that about? You're not going to be famous. Nobody's mm-hmm. going to buy your artwork. Literally, people, my so-called friends, was laughing at me. Yep. You know, and it's like, uh, and, and, and not that I believed in myself. I was just like, well, that you ain't nobody I want to listen to. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, what I want to, and so I have a, you have to have art mentors. You have to have uh, champions. You have to have people you talk to and hang out with who also have the same ideas and the same likes and dislikes and may also have a tick or two that could help you along the way Mm -hmm. and so mentors are important Mm -hmm. your art community is important you want to know who are the artists in this space that do the thing you like to do who are these artists who like to hang out with other artists and so this figure drawing thing this is exactly what that is is artists hanging out with artists having a good time talking about art and drawing about and drawing things that they like to draw Mm -hmm. it needs to start somewhere you need to hang out with your people these are your people yes 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 Mm -hmm. so um so before we go i want to make sure i tell you all what we're doing and why um so i touched on it a little bit so um 
we did our head studies we you know we went through and did our quick um drawings and we'll go through that actually in the next minute or so so hurry up dan um <laughs> um but um we did the head studies just to get moving and these last two um were two are two influential people who i actually have met living here in atlanta and um there is john lewis and stacy abrams and so um both of them are are people who have made change in their own ways and so um, I also feel like whatever it is that you do is your thing like Dan's thing is art but he's influencing artists all over the world and you know I hope to actually do that same thing in the circles that I run in as well so whatever your thing is you have the opportunity to influence people and so um, anyway I'm working on some pieces I wanted to practice with you all um, as I go through these head studies and so that's why we're doing this today so uh, Dan I appreciate all of that that good energy and you know you, you actually fed back into me um, the things that I needed to hear because I'm, I'm in the throes of art life right now and things are going well but you know you always need that reinforcement so I appreciate that mm-hmm well, you're welcome, and I'm I'm always open to hanging out with artists, man. I love artists. I hate people. I don't want to hang out with people. I hate. I don't wanna ha yeah, yeah. People are such bastards. <laughs> no, I want to hang out with artists, man. Let's talk about art. I, we can talk about football and stuff, but nah. I want to talk about art. Yeah. I want to talk about those things that feed our soul. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's yes. what we hear on this earth. You have this talent for a reason. There's a reason for it. Find that reason. Live it. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right. Let's let's uh, let's go back through what you got, and then I'll go back through what I have. All right. So there's the first one. Mm -hmm. And that's how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> always. It's always going to be like, um, you know, you, you get going. And then the second one is like, okay, you said we have five minutes. And then. So I started to draw the guy, and I thought I was going to do a cartoony style. So mm -hmm. I'm like, let me keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I started working on the girl, um, but I got to talking and didn't do much. And then I, but, but I, it was then that I started adding that little shading style to it. So I tweaked my pencil. Mm -hmm. And then I did the next girl, and I started to uh, keep that shading style, but it was still kind of cartoony. And then this guy really, he really got me. This guy, oh, my God. I, I, he's got a good face. Yeah. Plus the hair with the beard, it helped define the the an accent, the features of yeah. the face. So that was super cool. And uh, but then I started a lot of that cross hatching, and so I was doing cross hatching before I knew what cross hatching was, mm. because I love the pencil. I enjoy drawing with pencils, real life pencils. Like the smell of graphite is just amazing to me. <laughs> so so then I did um. Uh, I got here and I was like, you know what? Let's keep that. That um, I, 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 by then I was warmed up enough that I knew how I wanted to do my drawings, and they were gonna be all cross hatching, cross hatching, cross hatching. And then, uh, but Stacy Abrams, she got me, and uh, it's not really well done, but um, I was getting there. The more I work on it, the closer it'll get. Yeah. Yeah. To um, her actual face. Yeah, this, she don't look right. She look like Stacy Abrams and Roseanne. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let me show you what I have real quick. Um, so this is where I started, nice and rough and sketchy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Then all of this is really loose. Um then I got to the expressions. I this Oh, I missed that. Oh no, that's right. Yeah. She did have an expression. You're right. She uh this line of action model, she always brings the crazy expression, so mm -hmm. she's fun to draw. And he, he does a good job too, so um and then I have this one and John Lewis. I may play with John Lewis a little bit more. He didn't quite turn up the way I wanted him to, but and then Stacey Abrams. Yeah. So, yep. So that's where we are. That's what we have. Dan, I want to thank you so much for all of the the good energy and as well as all the art life advice that you gave us. Um, I know if there was a, a way to applaud, you know, we would give you that. So, Yay. so. <laughs> 
But thank you so much for being here today. Um, and thank you all for being here um, in Behance Land. Um, and if you're watching from anywhere else, thank you so much. And we are here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you follow Dan on his socials. Um, he has uh, the Scully Project that's coming up as well as all the other things that he's doing. So make sure you check him out on his um, socials. And you can follow me as well. All of my information is below. You can go to, to TamikaTheArtist.com. And Dan, tell them one more time where they can find you. Anywhere on the internet, Delta Tango Mike. And I'm currently working on an NFT project called Scully Series. And so Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Delta Tango Mike or Scully Series. Cool, cool, cool. All right, y'all. So until next time, um, thank you, Odari, um, Golden Rose, and everyone else that was in Behance. Um, and we will see you all soon. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Peace. Nobody can hear us. I think they can. <laughs> Bye, y'all.